It's always been my feeling that the best time to see a fine landscape is during the winter when you can see through it. It's transparent, it's like x-ray vision. That's what we have at the Fort Worth Botanic Garden. We sent a crew just a few weeks ago to see it before all the spring leaf out occurred. It's a beautiful garden. Let's go there now. Well, we're in the Fort Worth Botanic Gardens and within the Fort Worth Botanic Gardens, we have the Japanese Garden. And the Japanese Garden is about mm, six, seven acres and has all the different features that a typical Japanese garden would have. It's a little on a large scale that you would think of putting in your backyard, but a lot of the elements that are here, you can duplicate in your backyard. The main sound that you're gonna notice in the garden is going to be water. We have three lakes, one high lake, one medium lake, and one very, very low lake. And of course the water goes from high lake to medium lake to low lake, and then it's recycled back up to the high lake. A Japanese garden isn't really particularly about flowering plants as it is about the structure, the pathways, the texture of the plants, and what all the plants represent. For example, the ground covers are big, big areas, either on hillsides or in low areas. They sort of represent water, but at the same time, they represent that ground cover that is holding the soil, stopping erosion. The textures of the plant, we have spiny plants here. We have very, very soft textured plants here. All of these, again, represent the different ideas of what a Japanese garden um, brings to the table. And we have a lot of Japanese maples here. Japanese maples actually are in what we call an understory tree. They grow in the shade of these taller trees. And in order to do that, they make a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful structure in the garden, but at the same time, they make a beautiful fall foliage. We had a lot of people, a lot of the Japanese community here in Fort Worth were very, very much involved in designing this Fort Worth Japanese garden and in bringing the community in, the Japanese society in, uh, some Japanese landscape architects in to help with this design. It made it a true Fort Worth project because of that. The Japanese community has embraced this. Uh, they have a Japanese festival every spring and fall here. You'd not believe all the wonderful, wonderful things. They bring in artists, they bring in dancers, they bring in taiko drummers, martial arts uh, demonstrations. It's really, really, if you've never been to a Japanese festival, it's well worth it. It is most unique because of its size, because of its unique layout, because it was a rock quarry at one time. The capability of having the different, different levels where you actually start at the top and walk down into the bottom, and then you can walk back up. Thank you, my friend Dottie Woodson. That's a great report on the Fort Worth Botanic Garden, the Japanese Garden. What a great place. Be sure to go out there in the fall for the fall color. It's unbelievable. I want to introduce you to one of my friends. This is a 30-year-old croton that I've had in my landscape in the same place every summer. You hear me talking about it on the radio. You've seen it on my website. This is my friend. I have a lot of crotons that we put out every summer. The Trinity River Audubon Center will come up in just a moment. Andrea went there, and we're also going to check in with Chef Chris from Mark Market Street, his caramelized onion flatbread pizza. You don't want to miss it. Stay tuned. 